and welcome to Trust Me, I'm an Idiot. My name is Mike, and this is a 2010 Jaguar XKR, a nearly $100,000 car that my son and I picked up last year for under $25,000. Got about 60,000 miles on it, and it needs a new water pump. Uh, ours is leaking a little bit, so we're going to replace it. Um, I am the cameraman you can see right here. So without further ado, let's get right into it. Yeah, well, what you plan and what takes place ain't ever exactly been similar. So the first thing you want to do is find yourself a workshop manual. Um, this is actually pretty much the manual that the techs will use at you know, the dealership to work on the car. Um, you can probably find, search around on Google and find one. If not, they are available for purchase on a number of locations. And heck, you can even go to your dealer and buy one there. But um, it'll have all the steps you need all the diagrams on how to do every step. Let's go to the So the first thing we need to do is drain the old coolant out. So we need to remove the overflow tank cap and start draining from the radiator. I've also removed the engine cover, which we're gonna need out of the way later. Um, I've also disconnected the battery, which is a wonderful idea anytime you're working on the engine, because you don't want the computer to freak out or something, and or somebody hit the remote start, or something in the engine to start and take off your hand or something. So with that, let's go ahead and undo the cap. And now I've got to go underneath the front bunk. All right, so on the driver's side, front, there's this little screw thing that's partially obstructed. This, whatever this is, is loose. That is the drain for the radiator. Let's go ahead and open that up. And we'll get a container underneath to catch all the escaping liquid. You know, see how much comes out. So while that drains, and it looks like it's going to drain very slowly, move up top. I need to remove this plastic cover so we can get access to the front of the engine. Centers. And I only managed to drop one of them down there somewhere. So hopefully this should just right that was excellent. <laughs> that doesn't even help access at all. Hmm. Wondering if these air intakes may need to come off. Better back to the manual and see what it says. Alright, next up on the removal process is this T part of the air intake. Looks like this vacuum line is pretty shot. Dry and crudzy. Take that to the auto parts store and get a new one. Man, this shit. Brute force isn't working, you're not using enough.
that wasn't a pain in the ass at all. Alright, next we need to remove this right hand air intake intermittent pipe. Let's get that out of the way so we can get access to the idler for the supercharger. Okay, take off the supercharger belt to hook on to the idler down there with a 3 8 inch like breaker bar and then give it a yank, pull the belt off, we should be good to go. Next we need to take off the serpentine belt, which is that idler over there. I lied. Two more things left to do. Take off this water pipe and actually remove the idle tensioner. Oh man, these things are difficult. Yeah. Sorry about that. This is gonna be this is gonna be hard. I'm gonna try. Okay, I got the idler out of the way. I've got this end of the coolant pipe loose. This clamp up here has been giving me a really hard time. And then of course when I tried to disconnect this pipe, I broke the connector. So then I broke the connector up here. I have to replace the whole loom, or sorry, the whole piece up here, which is a $45 part. So who knows how much that will be. Hopefully this is just a more standardish piece and I can just do whatever. But now we have four bolts to get the pump out. All right, so here's the old one, all crusted and leaky. And the new one, not crusted and leaky. And I had to cut the hose to get it out. This was being exceedingly difficult. I'll just go to the auto parts store and get another one. Okay. So now, start putting it back in. So this came with the four bolts, go there, there, O-ring for in here, and two gaskets. Put the gaskets on. Now the bolts actually thread into the gaskets a little bit. So it's going to be fairly easy to make sure everything lines up and hopefully nothing will fall off and down in the engine bay or onto the floor or anything like that. Let's go ahead and bolt it up. six hours later. Now to finish up the job, all we have to do is put back everything we took off. So follow the steps in reverse order to reassemble everything. So I can't finish up yet because I gotta get some more parts and wait for one to arrive. But hopefully this helps you through on your project. Hope you enjoyed it. We'll see you on the next one.